1983 into 1984, every artist and band on the planet was massively outdone by one massive blockbuster. The biggest selling album of all time, Talking About Thriller. The Police, Pink Floyd, Hall & Oates, Styx, Foreigner, yes, David Bowie. Then some of the biggest albums of that time never got to number one because of it. Talking about Van Halen 1984, Def Leppard, Pyromania, and Duran Duran Rio, just to name a few. But that's when a rising superstar who was part Jimi Hendrix, part Little Richard, stepped up to the mic and unleashed a batch of songs that would one-up Michael Jackson. He'd dominate the charts 24 weeks at number one. He'd also do something even Michael Jackson couldn't do dominate movie theaters. He took a risk with a first-time director and a song that had no bass. Stories coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If you were one of those people who made a mixtape back in the day, this is your place, these are your people. Subscribe right now, click the bell, to get our daily content, we'd love to have you. To become a true insider though, uh, make sure to check us out what we do on Patreon. Dig, if you will, the picture of a young prodigy born Prince Rogers Nelson, known by his stage name, Prince. The lad developed ex extraordinary skills to become one of the true geniuses of the rock and roll era. Prince's innate to mastery for artistic innovation defied classification and broke the confines of race, gender, and musical genre conventionalism. In 1984, the unparalleled Prince virtuosity was under the gun when the artist was tasked with composing a track that would be used during a pivotal sequence in the movie Purple Rain. So let me set this up. It's early 1984, Prince was coming off his brilliant album, 1999, which gave him his first big hits on the chart, it was a celebrated album of 83, making most of the year's best album lists. He was critically adored, but not as well known by the masses. Michael Jackson was in the midst of global domination with what would become the biggest selling album in the world's history, Thriller. Prince was ready for his close-up, as they say. And though the press played up the Michael Jackson-Prince rivalry, the truth is overtaking Michael Jackson wasn't Prince's biggest priority. Prince wanted to overtake everybody. Prince against the world, and he was primed for his next move. That said, how could anybody overtake MJ? He just won a uh, record eight Grammys, seven top 10 hits from one album, MTV domination, it was a tall order. Enter the movie Purple Rain. Purple Rain was crafted to be a quasi-autobiographical pick that was loosely based on Prince's real life. In Prince's mind, the film was to be his version of the Beatles movie, A Hard Day's Night, a sort of embellished version of his own life story, although it is a mystery as to what scenes in the movie were based on actual events. Many of his band members, including keyboardist Matt Fink, have said that Prince uh, would talk about the conflict that uh, in real life that he had with his father uh, when he was young. More on that in a second. Although Prince had never acted in a movie, he wanted to jump into untested waters and make a big splash. Prince was to play the part of the kid, of course, a talented yet troubled singer growing up in a dysfunctional family with a contemptuous relationship with his father who physically batters his mother. The kid loses his love, played by Vanity Six star Apollonia, uh, to his rival portrayed by Morris Day from Morris Day in the Time. Purple Rain was conceived as a cinematic vehicle to showcase the brilliance of Prince, essentially breaking him into worldwide superstardom. I mean, the beautiful ones alone is worth the price of admission. Just incredible. The film was to be directed by first-time director Albert Magnoli. Amazingly, prior to Purple Rain, Magnoli only had uh, one acclaimed short film to his credit that he shot as a film student. Magnoli and William Blinn took notes from Prince for several months to write the screenplay for Purple Rain. Prince had finished uh, what he thought was all the music that was needed for Purple Rain, but Magnoli surprised him with an urgent phone call asking Prince to compose one more song that would match an important montage in the movie that intersected the, the protagonist's parental difficulties and a troubling love affair. We've talked about uh, this the last few days in some of our pieces, about how history being different depending on whose eyes we're seeing it through. 
One story is that Albert Magnoli requested the song. Another is suggested, and the definitive book about this period, you gotta read it, Dwayne Tudal's Prince and the Purple Rain Era Studio Sessions. We'll link to it below. He talks about how Prince was nominated for several Grammy Awards in 83 for 1999 and lost both to Michael Jackson Thriller. And the Prince uh, was potentially humbled by the loss. The next few days in that period of time, the Prince uh, could have possibly been inspired to work on something more introspective. And that might have been a catalyst to work on what many consider to be the most personal song of Prince's career. And that's saying something. Uh, this was in early 84 again, so apparently Prince quickly tapped into another dimension of creativity the few mortals like us had, had access to. So we're all aware he was otherworldly, a genius on levels even geniuses marvel at. Prince had remarkably finished two songs to present to Magnoli. One of the two songs was a track Prince was particularly proud of called When Doves Cry. When Doves Cry is a metaphor for the disruption of the tranquility and harmony of love. Of course, a dove being a symbol of peace, when two people fight with each other, it disturbs that peace, and that is when doves cry with a soft, lamenting coo. Prince constructed a song in his head that he thought would be perfect for what the director summoned. The lyrics he penned in a notebook were incisive and beautifully depicted the emotion of the gripping montage that the song would be placed under. Maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm just like my father, too bold. Maybe I'm just like my mother. She's never satisfied. Why do we scream at each other? This is what it sounds like when doves cry. Why do we scream at each other? A tall, slender species called the mourning dove symbolizes more than grief or sadness. They represent optimism in the face of tragedy. According to the website Bright Hub Education, Beyond the Dove's sorrowful song is a message of life, hope, renewal, and peace. Prince was no doubt awakened and duly inspired many times by the sound of the actual doves that lived on the property of his home in Minnesota. In the words of Prince biographer Pierre Nelson, when Doves Cry was influenced by his stormy relationship with Vanity Six member Susan Moonsey. Uh, the timeline for writing When Doves Cry could also be associated with Vanity herself because she played a, a significant role in Prince's life before leaving his close circles during the production of Purple Rain due to a dispute about money. There are many remarkable elements that made When Doves Cry such a, a powerfully moving song. For the motion picture soundtrack, as well as a riveting pop wonderment, um, the time that Prince spent in the studio to record the song could arguably rank as the most important session of his illustrious career. I'm excited, really excited to dissect uh, the arrangement of the song's extraordinary instrumental track, a lush auditory landscape executed entirely by one person, Prince. Prince performed every instrument and performed all the vocals on When Doves Cry. Inside the Sunset Sound Studio, Prince used his dependable LM1 drum machine, which is now on display at the Paisley Park Museum, uh, to get that unique percussion sound that he conceptualized. The LM1 was the first programmable drum machine that sampled real drums. To make that perfect sound, Prince integrated a recording of a cross-stick snare drum where one holds the tip into the head of the drum and strikes the stick on the rim. He then turned the level down an octave to give the effect a knocking sound and ran it through a guitar processor. Prince was renowned for his unbelievable ability to master every single instrument that he touched. In fact, uh, it reminds me. When I interviewed legendary producer Jimmy Jam, who wrote and produced uh, for some of the biggest artists in history, including Janet Jackson's most iconic songs and albums, and he also, of course, produced Brother Michael. Uh, I remember at a break in the interview, I asked him, having both worked with Michael Jackson and Prince, who he believed was greatest. He said something to the effect of, uh, well, let me put it this way. My most astute instrument is the bass guitar, and I can hold my own. Prince would take my bass and play circles around me, and it's not his main instrument. Prince was praised as one of the greatest drum machine programmers of the 80s, amongst other things. 
Prince played the mesmerizing keyboard riff in One Dove's Cry on a Yamaha DX7 using the Kodo patch. Like many of Prince's most popular creations, he had a melody in his head that he recreated in the studio through meticulous experimentation. The keyboard refrain embedded in the chorus was meant to constitute the sound of Dove's crying. This is what it sounds like when the, doves... the melody of When Dove's Cry builds a rhythmic groove, but the song, famously, has no bass line, which is unheard of for a dance number. In fact, Prince once said, and I quote, what is commercial and what is innovative? One of my biggest records had no bass, end of quote. Now, Prince originally had a bass line under, underneath it, uh, but the decision to remove the bass line from When Doves Cry was made shortly after Prince hit an impasse in the studio. Former Prince backing vocalist Jill Jones came to visit Prince while he was dutifully in the middle of recording When Doves Cry, and uh, she saw that he was visibly frustrated. Jones asked Prince what was wrong, and after a pause, he said, if I had it my way, it would sound like this. And then Prince shoved down the bulk of the instrument faders and played only the audio for the drums and the xylophone. And when the vocals began to come through over the chorus, uh, Jill quizzed Prince again, why can't you have it your way? Prince went silent. The next time that Jones heard the song, she heard the sparse, scaled down mix that Prince played her in the studio. Prince removed the bass line because he thought it sounded too conventional <laughs> and subjugated the meaning of the song. With no bass, When Doves Cry is dominated by the strength of its permeating drum beat. Dig if you will, the picture. You uh, of course, the beat is entrancing in that uh, it isn't your normal pop beat. With four beats per measure, it seems to mess with your senses, increasing the song's compulsive charm. While well, getting a groove on, I mean, one is typically tapping or head bobbing on the second or fourth beat of each measure, which is where the bass line usually lives. You think about that. Adversely, the syncopated beat of When Doves Cry hits on the first and halfway between the second and third beat. Animals strike curious poses. The crazy mosh of unsteady and unexpected rhythm combined with the heavy toms and other unique percussive sounds gives One Dove's Cry a contagious tribal force. Prince began his composition with a sticky, dissonant, impossible to recreate electric guitar solo evoking the tempestuous relationship that the song illustrates. Prince's guitar solo in the outro, simultaneous with his primal vocal wailing, is a double charge of raw sensuality. reminiscent of Marvin Gaye's 76 classic, I Want You. The chorus of When Doves Cry features multiple vocal tracks layered on top of each other. There is a, an emotional, melodic vocal in the lead backed by two separate lower voices that create a chord effect. The lowest voice effectively serves as a bass function. It's another deftly unusual ad lib by Prince that ultimately processes a swelling wave of voices crying out the symbolic words, When Doves Cry. Prince's When Doves Cry was born out of his incessant drive to outdo himself and a ceaseless ability to innovate. His Purple Majesty's varied musical influences come out in uh, his complex, dexterous arrangement. I mean, the Hendrix-like guitar solos, uh, the funky R&B infection, the rock-infused J.S. Bach, keyboard flares, and the passionately provocative vocal expressions. I guess Prince was really excited about this song. He actually ran around to like four in the morning and somebody run off a tape. And he went around to all of his band members and showed up at their house and woke them up, you know, four in the morning, had them drive around with him while he played this song. He was intensely proud of this song. Why would he be? And it worked. When Doves Cry was the biggest hit of 1984, and it sounds just as exhilarating today as it did back then. It was the lead single from the blockbuster Purple Rain LP, Prince's sixth studio album, and his first number one hit. When Doves Cry perched on top of the Billboard Hot 100 for five straight weeks. It was a number one on the Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart, 
Uh, number one on the Dance Club Songs chart, number four in the UK, number one in Canada, and of course the top selling single of 1984. When Doves Cry re-entered the top 10 music charts in many countries, including the US, when Prince sadly passed away in 2016, and when Purple Rain rose to number one on the Billboard album chart in 84, Prince joined Elvis and the Beatles as the only acts to have the number one album, single, and film in the United States at the same time. Checkmate, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Chew over this. Purple Rain was a film directed by a no-name rookie, produced by a first-time producer, and starring a singer who had never acted before. Plus, they shot the picture in Minneapolis in the dead of winter. There was no reason to project that Purple Rain would be more than just a cult hit. I mean, Prince, he just was truly one of a kind. Like I said earlier, before the release of Purple Rain, Prince was not the international superstar that he became. He was actually considered more of a fringe artist. So in essence, the crew went into the filming believing that they were making a fringe movie. Think about that for a second. Purple Rain the movie grossed over $70 million around the world, more than 10 times what the film cost to make. It would actually be equivalent to about $170 million gross today, which is huge. The box office success of Purple Rain was apparently shocking to everybody but Prince. Revolution drummer Bobby Z recalled Prince emphatically telling his band that they were making history. We're making history tonight. This is history tonight. Bobby remembers Prince shouting that on the night that they shot their concert scenes for the film at the Minneapolis nightclub uh, First Avenue. Purple Rain, the album, and the motion picture were truly highlighted by the urgent final track that Prince made for the project, shrewdly placed in the most memorable part of the movie. Author and journalist Alan Light best summarized the sensation of When Doves Cry in the following excerpt. Nobody believed that this was going to be such a catalyst for the kind of success that it had. To be able to do something that's so experimental and so bold, have it be that popular, connecting universally, it's just unbelievable. It takes an artist of that magnitude to be able to pull that off. End of quote. Poetically, fate would follow the script of the big picture career plan for Prince. Purple Rain turned Prince into a household name around the world, and it catapulted him to one of the indisputable luminaries of the rock and roll era. The first three plus months of 1984, the number one album was still Thriller, Michael Jackson, yeah, even though it was released in late 82. But by midsummer 1984, Purple Rain was at the number one position on the album charts, and it held that for the rest of the year, 24 weeks in all. At that moment, it really was Prince against the world. And guess what? Prince won. In a long list of divinely inspired Prince compositions that include many of the most iconic and revered songs ever recorded, When Doves Cry hovers above with everlasting grace and artistic achievement. We salute the purple one, one of our universe's last true musical geniuses. Leave us a comment about this transcendent song. What do you remember about its majesty in 1984? Share your thoughts on the movie and Prince's genius and this song. If you dig this video, we do this every day and we invite you to subscribe below where you can celebrate with us so you never miss out. To get the deluxe edition of Purple Rain on vinyl or CD, click on the Amazon links below or the shirt. To get even more content, check us out on Patreon. Help us keep the music alive. Until next time, Three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe out there.